My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay the Spire, the Heartbreaker Chronicles. We'll be continuing with the Ascension 20 defect. Uh, quick note off of the top of this, I did a little bit of uh, practice for the Heartbreaker Chronicles off camera. And I posted the screenshots on Twitter. I got a beyond perfect 4,400 something, not 4,400, actually that was a completely different run than I'm thinking of, but a beyond perfect Ascension 20 Heartbreaker run with the defect. Uh, why can't that happen on camera? Damn it. <laughs> it's so painful. Uh, not, not to have to do it, the, the pain comes in that it happened off camera as I was like, oh, I'm just getting a little bit of practice in here so that I can be better for the main series. No. Turns out, no. I'm going to Transformer Strike here, actually. Fast Cognition. All right, that's interesting. So now I'm looking out for Core Surge, any source of artifacting that I can possibly pick up. Other than that, I've got to think, okay, am I going to be winning this fight in the next five turns? If so, I have to play the Bias Cognition. For instance, here... Mm hmm We'll definitely be winning in time to play it. Root sequence versus self-repair. I'll take the self-repair just because the path that I'm gonna go Oh, I'll take that. Uh just because the path that I'm gonna go down has three elites on it. Okay, card removal. I couldn't have known I was gonna get card removal in literally the next space. I should probably remove a defend because I've already removed a strike and we're in a position now where a gremlin knob would absolutely destroy us. Okay, because I have the bias cognition left in the deck, I'm not going to be using dual cast there. That's 12. Can't kill the enemy this turn. Damn. Got him now, though. All for one. All for one would allow me to pull back Zap Dual Cast after I upgrade them, though. But how soon are they going to get upgraded? They'll both get upgraded over the course of this floor. Sure. Specifically, I want that because the Zap Dual Cast. Uh, it's important to have them out commonly as a result of having lightning orbs. Sorry, as a result of having all the extra strength, power, focus. There we go. Focus. Uh, speaking of extra focus, that cold snap is a nice defensive thing that can allow me to kind of defend less as I extend for lethal. Also, it's another attack. Also... Gremlin knob is really bad for us, so yeah, there's the gremlin knob. If I'm gonna use a skill potion at all here, it has to be right now. Okay. I'll probably still use zap this fight if I get it. Huh? Very youch. 16, 16, 5 is not enough. All right. Because I'm vulnerable and the enemy gets three strength every single time that I uh, defend, multiple defends would be needed before I'm actually even breaking ahead. Uh, Strawberry upon pickup, raise your max HP by seven, as well as the Emerald Key and Explosive Potion. I'll take a go for the eyes, especially because we have the turbo right now. The problem is I desperately want to upgrade in this position, but I also definitely need to rest. Doom and Gloom provides a little AoE this deck doesn't really have access to yet. 
Dark Shackles is interesting because I can pull it back at any time for all for one. And it would be super useful on turn two in the upcoming boss fight. The thing is, in the boss fight, I am not going to be able to play Bias Cognition for a very long time. Centennial Puzzle, the first team to lose HP each combat, draw three cards. More than happy to take that. So I should just try and set up a bunch of orbs here if I can. No, I'm still going to want all of those orbs up <clears throat> for when I start using the other card that I have forgot the name of. Bias Cognition to help push for lethal. Which is this turn. So I take 8 damage that turn, but now... Yeah, we've already got lethal. Beautiful. Okay, so we took 18 damage over the course of this fight and played a self-repair, so we do get 7 back. Whetstone upon pick up upgrade to random attacks. Echo form, though. It's too powerful to turn down. Okay, can I take one of these out? Twenty-four, maybe. What I can definitely do is weaken both of them. If I'd gone for the extra strike there and then used an explosive potion, I could have killed the frontliner. But that only saves me one HP that turn. Excellent. <laughs> 21, yikes. Let's get the self-repair out there. I'm going to dual cast, full defend. That also puts a lightning orb at the front of the party so that I have the ability to dual cast that later should I happen to get it. Uh, thankfully, we don't need to. Barrage versus Tempest versus Stack. I'll take a Tempest. I feel like if I don't upgrade both Zap and dual cast before the boss fight, we will lose because we just won't go off fast enough. Taking 10 damage here on turn one so that I can get the echo form out. It's a rough play, but I feel essential. So I could dual play uh, Tempest here, but I would die. I have to dual play a defense, then use Zap, all for one. Okay, do I want to double biased cognition? I do. And I definitely don't want a cold snap. I want all of my lightning orbs available. By enemies, hello, Gremlin Horn. Whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. Uh, double energy makes sense because of how many high cost things we already have in this deck. Unfortunately, can't take medical kit, but you know, can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might just find that you get what you need. 
Uh, I'm thinking charge battery as well as a card removal. Charge battery because we do have like high, uh, unexpectedly high cost cards in the deck already. We've got Echo Form, obviously all for one is a little bit costly. We've got Tempest and we have the ability to capitalize on doubling our energy with the double energy. Uh, but it's, it's possible it's not that. It could also be Beam Cell. Or Boot Sequence. It's Boot Sequence. Because we have the awful one to bring back boot sequence. Super good. Unfortunately, I do have to rest here. As much as I want to upgrade the dual cast. Really? That's a garbage turn because I wanted all for one in the second hand so that I could bring back boot sequence. Let's go for the eyes. I have to play echo form. If I don't play echo form, I am not gonna win the fight. bring back anything I want. Hopefully the Dark Shackles is important later on. It's not right now. It's probably too early to play the Bias Cognition. Oh no, but the thing is, if I am in this fight for five more turns, I'm already dead, so... I haven't got enough HP to survive the... the worst follow-ups. Mm -hmm. uh, zap, zap, and then all for one back. Play the zap. Charge battery. Good. So dual cast next turn is lethal. Or we'll just go straight for it. Whew. Uh, there's the core surge I was looking for. Obviously, double echo form is ridiculous, but core surge though? If I can play the bias cognition without worrying, life is so much easier for us. Uh, I'm going to keep both of the explosive potions for the next floor. Really? This deck needs the extra energy. It has an x cost card. It has the uh, Echo Form. It has double energy in it. Ascension 20, taking the Runic Dome, because of the Writhing Mass and the uh, and the difficulty of knowing what the heart is going to be doing on turn 2 and 3. Well, you... <clears throat> and the Time Eater can also be... Horribly low determination. I'm going to take the lizard tail. I feel like we're going to spend this entire floor regretting that. It's the bunch of AoE fights this floor that I wanted to keep the explosive potions for. In particular, the AoE elite fights. God, I hate the muggers. Defragment versus genetic algorithm pre-upgraded. We'll take the defragment. Great. So we don't become frail here, which is nice.
about as well as I could have defended that turn. Uh, definitely biased. About as well as I could have defended that turn as well. See, we're behind the power curve already, which is really, really difficult to get ahead of on this floor. Second boot sequence. Zero cost cards are really, really godsends at the moment. Taking the HP because I've got an elite fight really soon. Easy 50 gold there. Upgrade all strikes and defense. Thank you. That's going to help us get a little bit further towards the power curve. Uh, so the upgrades that we need. We need bias cognition upgraded. We need dual cast upgraded. We need defragment upgraded. But most of all, we're going to need double energy upgraded so that it doesn't just give us one energy and instead gives us three. Because if I don't play Echo Form that turn, I'm just dead eventually. <clears throat> we can double play that double energy, but I don't think it's going to be relevant. It's not. I'm going to double play Go for the Eyes. Then play the double energy so that I can get out my entire hand here. And I'm not going to dual cast there because we do have the Bias Cognition left in the deck. We're probably dead here. Mm -hmm. Never mind. We managed to fire that fight. Uh, back of preparation at the start of combat, draw two additional cards. That's really good. Second Tempest. Probably Ball Lightning here, actually, instead. The Tempests are really heavy because I don't have that extra energy, and the Tempests aren't upgraded. Vajra versus Sapphire Key. I think I'm going to take the Sapphire Key here. Vajra is nice, but this deck doesn't necessarily need it. Ow. Really? What an awful draw. Because now I don't have Dark Shackles on the turn that I would need it, and I've already passed over my awful one. So. Life's rough. That charge battery gave us a bunch of extra energy for this turn, which allows us to blow the enemy up with the Tempest, Necker Whirl, as well as. Cool headed versus sweeping beam. I kind of want sweeping beam for a little bit of AoE in the deck, but also we only have one source of frost orbs currently, and I need some more frost orbs. Yeah, I'm gonna want to play every card this turn. I know that I have artifacting, so I would be able to keep that, but I'm gonna play all of these attacks this turn anyway. Unfortunately, Echo Form is death there. We need the extra defense. Mm-hmm. Now we can't remove the Bias Cognition debuff here either. 
But if we don't play Bias Cognition, we're dead this turn anyway, so. Art of War, if you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain an additional energy next turn. Yeah, we kind of need that. Uh, if I had a capacitor in the deck already, I would take Consume here. We don't have a capacitor in the deck already. So it's a lot more difficult for me to take Consume. It might just be another double energy. Definitely need some draw in this deck now as well. Remove three strikes, add five bites. The problem is this deck doesn't have enough defense. Flooding it with more offense is going to be the, is not going to help us. If we had a bunch more frost orbs, I would be more keen on that option. But we don't, so I'm not. Um, still, uh, it's chill and static there for me, definitely. Is there a card I want to remove from the deck? Not particularly. Maybe I'd take another charge battery just because we don't have energy in this deck yet. So charge battery is our energy. We're going to dodge the final lead on this floor though. Really? Can we not have that happen just like every time? The worst possible opening draw. Should have played charge battery there. I didn't play it because I was tilted. That's my bad. Oh, cool. We got the core surge now. You know, bit late, but it's fine. All for one, I get a double energy. I use the double energy to play the echo form. I've just got to be damaging at all times right now, which is a problem because now my deck is like half dazed. Yeah, we're dead. Oh. Never mind, we managed to survive that turn. Although now we've got Sneko Eye in play, so we're confused. Yeah, definitely the wrong ordering there. I forgot that I had Echo Form. I'm I'm tilted by how this is going currently. Attempts to kill though. None of those for us. I need to rest in this position as much as there are other cards I would love to upgrade. If I don't rest in that position, I'm probably dead. Oh, okay. Core Surge Bias Cognition with the Zap on the first turn. That's really good. Unfortunately, I couldn't avoid playing an attack that turn to get the extra energy next turn from Art of War. Chill on the second turn. Okay. So it looks like the game was just waiting until this floor, or this floor, this fight to give me uh, my dues. I'll definitely double energy this turn, but I don't know if I'm going to Tempest. Yeah, I'm not going to. play that first for the possibility of drawing a zero cost that I wanted to play there. All right. <clears throat> There's double form echo energy. 
It's fine. I'll just play the double form. I don't need to play those strikes. I, in fact, get an extra point of energy this turn for having not played strikes. That's definitely Tempest time. Uh -huh. Killed him. Pretty giant amount of defense to be able to pick up that turn. And yet again, the turn after. Okay. Things are starting to look up for us. As aggressive as we can possibly be there. That 31 is actually really rough. Dual casting all for one makes no sense. So we'd be taking one hit of damage here, so we get another lightning orb out, which is nice. Excellent. <clears throat> Almost full defense right there as well. And lethal. Okay. Okay. If we get inserted here, I'm going to have to take it. And I won't be super pleased about that. Buffer is really, 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 really good. If I take the Velvet Choker, I am going to have a lot of difficulty. The primary reason I'll have difficulty with that is because All For One exists in the deck as well as Echo Form. So Echo Form was playing a card twice at the very start. All For One refunds a bunch of cards into my hand. And if we can't play all of our stuff that turn, that's that's really rough. The extra point of energy is really important though. Generating a Frost Orb every turn... If you end your turn with any empty orb slots, channel one frost. The problem is we don't empty out our orb slots commonly. When we fill them, we don't really exhaust them, except to add more instead. So I don't know if the cracked core would actually perform much for me. I don't like that I had to take the Velvet Choker, but I don't think I had much of a choice there. Hey, Time Eater. Cool, Time Eater and Velvet Choker. Wow. There's a path with three early upgrades. I really want those upgrades. Obviously, you hope for a little bit better than that, but that's okay. Choker prevents me from playing the dual cast at the end of that turn. I'll double energy so that I can then Tempest. Double energy again. Boot sequence, I get to play two more cards now. So these both evoke for six apiece, so... All works out. <clears throat> Blizzard. We don't have enough frost generation to capitalize on Blizzard yet, unfortunately.
I might allow myself to take one damage here because it'll trigger the Centennial Puzzle, draw me extra three cards, as well as also get us a Lightning Orb. I'm losing the buffer this turn anyway. <sighs> Upgraded equilibrium, sure. Very happy to have that. Oh, okay. I think I might offer all for one for the full heal as well as 10 max HP here, especially because all for one doesn't, it's, it's very heavy in this deck at the moment because of the Velvet Choker. And I don't want to include more zero cost cards and start using it that way. I've got to be very mindful of the exploder in the back line because that could be a problem. Unplayable cards in our deck right now. <laughs> I can't guarantee that I can even kill that backliner. Just need to generate as much defense as I possibly can so that the explosion doesn't destroy my HP. That sucked. Problem is playing that bias cognition earlier so that I could defend myself is also going to make our life really hard. No matter what I did that turn, I was losing my buffer. Yeah. <clears throat> we are very suddenly getting very close to the turns where the lightning orbs aren't going to be enough. This spiker now has just an insane amount of spikes. It is so difficult to get any damage on them. I'm going to need, like, dual cast, dual cast this turn or something. Come on. Cool. Double energy, double energy, double energy, Tempest. Just enough. We were already negative by a fair bit there. Alright, so we're already fully defended. Nice. Being able to play everything that turn is nice. <clears throat> Can double the core surge, then play biased cognition. It's probably the right move. So Velvet Joker has stopped me from playing one card total in all of my fights this floor. It's just really recognizable when Velvet Choker messes with you, but it's worth noting 
these bites would be going far worse if I didn't have it. You can't make the mistake of comparing things to an ideal that doesn't exist, that isn't realistic. Should have just doubled the self-repair there. That was my initial instinct, but somehow I got voided on it. Uh, yeah, we actually have enough. Powers to make a storm thing work. That's a really bad opening hand. It's a garbage opening hand. Wow. I'm gonna use a power potion. I now feel slightly better about it. I'm using that turn just to try and evoke as many frost orbs as possible. Try and save myself from as much damage as possible. Double up on that echo form. It's a fragment. And then double up on a ball lightning. Hell yeah. So echo form, echo form is now definitely going to cause problems with the Velvet Choker. Like that. Retaining my hand twice is really nice. It just means that I'm definitely going to have a defensive card in my next turn. Which is nice, considering what the enemy is trying to do to me here. Would have loved to make the enemy vulnerable there, but it's okay. Mercury Hourglass. At the start of your turn, deals three damage to all enemies, as well as a strength potion. Asunder. It's too late in the game to take Sunder. Like, Static Discharge, Defragment, and Bias Cognition all need to be upgraded. I'm going to take the Static Discharge, actually. Because I think it will help me avoid a lot of damage. Data Disc! Start each combat with one focus. Very, very, very good. I'm going to recall here so that I have my uh, upgrade, upgrade later on, or upgrade rest, depending on you know, how it feels. Okay. Still taking an absolute fair chunk of damage there. Even got the frontliner down. What card did we draw and then lose? Dual cost. So I can double play buffer. That's really good. No, no, it's double play self repair. I need the extra healing from it. Pre-upgraded charge battery. Energy pot over a strength pot. We don't really attack that often. Orange pellets. Whenever you play a power attack and skill in the same turn, remove all of your debuffs. Yep. That's going to allow us to play the bias cognition in a different order. I'd take another chill, but there's very few AoE fights from now on out. Like, at least very few that, you know, call for a chill. Uh, buffer needs to be upgraded. So does Defragment. 
So does biased cognition. Get the biased cognition upgrade. Potion belt. Upon pick up, gain two potion slots. Not bad. Uh, I'm going to have to rest here. There's no two ways around that one. question there was, do I want to keep the boot sequence in my deck? Do I want to draw extra this upcoming turn? So, there was a little bit of an internal debate about ordering. So now I'm going to have the extra draw this turn, which is nice. <clears throat> Cool, we can generate the echo form with ease. The enemy is about to debuff me, which means that the core surge is going to be a problem. But if I play bias cognition and attack and a skill in the same turn, I can immediately remove the debuff of the bias cognition courtesy of the orange pellets. But I'll also be removing the debuff that the enemy is applying this turn. Okay, so it's charge battery. You are kidding me! I forgot that I had Echo Form out. So because I double played that... Uh-huh. I didn't have the ability to play three more cards at the end there. I need buffer this hand. I need an attack this hand right now. Thank you! There we go. Orange Pellets removes all of my debuffs here. Gosh. Woo. Oh, that was scary. Didn't want to play a bunch of extra cards that turn. Enemy's going to be doing their shenanigans this turn. Uh, does tumble, uh, Double Tempest blow the enemy up here? All right, let's actually calculate it. So it's 12, but it takes one to fill the slots. So it's 11 evokes. 11 evokes at 18 is just slightly higher than 180 plus the 39 at the very end. Yeah, that's lethal. All right, boss one down. Wow, we actually didn't get the worst boss. I'm amazed. Do I play Bias Cognition? I think if I don't, I lose, so. I'm going to allow myself to take four damage this turn so that I get the extra draw from the Centennial Puzzle because it's really important that I get an attack, a skill, and a power this turn. I did get them, by the way. So we remove our debuff. I don't want to lose my uh, my buffer that turn. Not yet. Enemy has artifacting, so I can't just, you know, dark shackle you. We'll never be able to dark shackle them. We need to get that out of the deck.
Yeah, no two ways around this one. So we die this turn. The potion activated first. That's interesting. As in, it activated before Lizard Tail, which is also available. I double play Static Discharge there because I expect that I will be taking some more HP damage over the course of this fight. Oh, yeah. So we die to the second hit, revive on half HP. Generate a ridiculous amount of lightning there. Double energy is just not useful this turn, unfortunately. Generate eight lightning this turn. Double energy is also not useful this turn. Double energy has been useful over the course of this run, though. I will stand by it. garbage hand, please. Yeah, you know what? That'll do it. So that's an Ascension 20 victory with the defect. Cool. Now we need to beat the hard. That's a lot more difficult. Let's see what we can get done, though. I think I really need to upgrade buff buff. Uh, maybe that's wrong. Seventeen HP we get for resting here. Yeah, we're gonna need it. We're gonna need every point. It's definitely Dex potion. These folks do debuff you, so. Really? You put two burns in my deck and then I instantly drew them. Like, are we... Is this actually going to happen to me? Because what looks like it's happening is that we're about to die. The burns triggered at the end of the turn, put a bunch of cards in my hand, and then discarded them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just dead. Dex Potion wouldn't have saved us. Let me make this clear. That was a defect win on Ascension 20. The Heartbreaker runs are not easy. For the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been not a bad defect Ascension 20 win as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. And hopefully we'll see you next time.